Welcome to the second part of my video for doing this beautiful gum tree from textile art. Part one we covered getting to this stage where we're ready now to start the final touches embellishing and hand stitching. Now I think at this stage before I grab the embroidery threads I look to see what I might want to uh, couch on what, what bits and pieces I've got so I'm just looking in the in the wool container that I have specialty yarns I've started with some of these can you see these are those lovely ones that are that are wool that is tightly bound here and, and more fluffy here it's got a thread that holds it together there which you can keep or you don't need to but my point is you can do this look at that look at that shape you know that could that could be really nice so that's kind of what I look for I look for things that I could use here's another one and this one doesn't have the thread holding it together that was wound around but mm, you know that's pretty pretty perfect for what I was after so whilst we're on threads let's just talk about a few other things this one here is some fibrous kind of bamboo stuff. I like it. Always look to see what you've got and what it looks like when it's pulled apart. I like, for example, here's a bit of scrap. That's the selvage. But this material, look at the threads. That's got a lovely um, copper thread through it. And it's got oh, this one here runs through it. So I always look to see what I can use. I might pull materials apart, all kinds of things. I've got three of these lovely pieces here that have got this. I like to use those. I really do. That would be nice up there, I think. Um, okay, and whilst we're on it, these. These are sort of like a, a tubular knitted ribbon, see? But when I pull it, oh my, look at that. I love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I just, I love it. I could do some stitches around that and that would look like some leaves. I don't know. But I'm just saying it's very interesting to see what you've got and play with it and see what else it could be beyond what it's meant to be. And here's another one of those tubular things that you can, like I said, pull apart. This one's a different kind, so it doesn't do it as readily. And it still does something interesting. And does do this though and I have used this before it unravels but when it does it does this kinky kind of can you see a kind of kinky thread like a little zigzag and I just think that that is also something that's quite nice imagine if you had it you know up here couched on something like that so just looking at things a little bit differently, how you might play with them. This salvage that I was talking about on this material, look at that. Is that not grasses? Imagine if we just There we go. This made it a little bit more random. <laughs> That's really nice. So that's what I look at. I look to see what I might be able to play with um, just to get my ideas starting to flow. And then I'll grab some embroidery threads and I'll finish the rest off by hand. So here we are. I have been having a little look-see at this. And like I said, I really do like these things. But they can be a little bit tricky to hold down. See these ones that were looking very raggy. I can put a little bit of this over top. Let me show you a little trick. Uh, there's a piece of foam underneath, doggy, 
old piece of foam and I'm just going to use one of these this is a felting needle you can buy single ones and you punch so you can buy these things singly or you can buy um, a holder which you can put more in but just because I'm wanting to tack it down a little bit before I start the stitching just sort of do a bit of a like that so what will happen is that when I pick it up it's going to stay there and the reason why is because can you see here it is pushing those fibers through so that it's tacking it to the material so this is a real amalgamation of different uh, techniques this one and just cut that and really just to show you some of the, the little tricks I use now if we wanted a little um, what are they called you know the whirls burls Let me just turn it around like that if I didn't want all of that in it I'd just use that bit I think you're getting the idea um, so I'm just basically using this as shading now probably going a bit too far but that's all right I could take that off I can cut it off I'm, if I don't like it I can just pull it out you know whatever done but let's at least put some of it in it's because I like the color so I've started to use a few different techniques here and it is because I like blending different crafts together Now, I can easily keep going on that and, and tack it in properly. Um, I can also stitch it in. I can do a lot of things. This one here, I'm just going to couch on. But maybe instead of being all one um, size from top to bottom, I do something like that. So it looks a little bit more natural, if you see what I mean. Something. Maybe it's better with the darker colours down below because that's how it really is. So let's just fast forward a little bit through this. I'll use this lovely needle felting and couch some more things on and just get an idea of what I want to do. Well, what do I mean by shading? It's really tricky, isn't it? Well, I'm sort of thinking that hmm, the sun is really above. So see the top of this branch has got some light on it and the bottom has got some shade. And down here, well, all of the trees, the gum trees are always darker at the bottom where the older, um, the older barks are. So I'm happy to leave, you know, that quite dark. But up here, I want these patches of light coming through from um, the sun coming where it can in between the leaves. But also, you know, in here, it would be quite dark because it's a shadow. And all of this would be blocking it. The light would be coming from outside. More on this side, I think. See how I've got a, the light on the top or on the left hand side. So you can't see that there. So probably I'd want something here as well to sort of add a little bit of darkness there, not a huge amount. So what did we have that we liked? Hmm. We still got this, this bluish stuff. Goodness, I do love it. I'm going to use it, probably use something like that to, when I'm doing this whirl down here. Sorry, you can't see me. You know, something like that. Just add something more than just being a simple 
beautiful thing and I quite like adding a bit of blue. Blue is a good shadow colour. So I could bunch this stuff up. Put something beside it maybe. Are we looking more tree-like? I do get carried away and make it a little bit too rough sometimes, but I can always bring bring it back. I can bring it back. We'll see. So I've been looking at this lovely tubular ribbon and thought it really is delicious. I love it. So I'm thinking it actually looks like a leaf, especially if I make one end a bit pointy, pull the other end out. You know, it's good because this is solid and we have the bits underneath that weren't and they're, they're disguised a little bit. That was just meant to be a vague, vague, you know, in the background suggestion. And because this is a gauze, I can pull it apart like that and show more through if I want. But look at that. I look quite like those. And so I've sort of put another one, you know, I don't know where I'll put them, but that's just to show you how I look at things like this and I think wow you could be something and just with doing that I'll put it down where you can see it how lovely so we'll put, pop some of those in as well I think I wasn't going to go to town on the leaves just adding a few here and there but I can't resist that kind of thing I think that's um, very pretty So don't forget sometimes to step back and have a look at it and just sort of think uh, which bits of I don't I like, you know, which bits do I like. Well, I don't like this. Something very wrong there. So I'll probably try and put something over top of this dark bit. Let's just see what we've got. Maybe some, some of this bamboo fibre. Just something to make it not so... Yeah, something not so, uh, just blunt. So I'm going to start I'm just using a, a brown that's sort of in between. It's not the light, it's not the dark, it's in between. So it should be able to use it for a lot of things. And I'm just going to start somewhere. I liked this, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to do a stitch here and there to almost like the thread that was wound around this roving. I'm going to couch it down. So if you can see I'm going, it's on this side and then I'm going down a bit and on the other side. This side to that side. And that just makes sure that it's nicely anchored. So it's a little bit of all sorts really. I'm not terribly fussy about it. But if I do some seed stitch I try and take a little bit more out into the other area to try and, you know, blend it in a little bit at the same time. And seed stitch I try and go in different directions and and that so it's not so obvious. Looks a bit more natural. There we are. So something like that. Let me try and bring it up so that you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. I've got the seed stitch here. I'm holding this down. So I'll just continue on. Down here, on this thick part, I definitely use something like seed stitch to hold different parts of it down. Not too bad. I am also using a bit of seed stitch here. I'm holding down this background. I don't know whether it is trees or hills, but either way, I'm 
just to have it so that it's not such a, a blunt edge. I'm doing seed stitch on it and then over the edges of it as well. And I've also grabbed some of that, that lovely tealy blue coloured unraveled um, tubular specialty yarn that I had. And it's really nice to use as shading on this. Adds a little bit more depth to it. This tree is really taking shape now. I'll try a different thread and I might do some running stitch. I might do some couching, some seed stitch. But it will just build up in layers now as to what I want. And don't forget sometimes to take that step back and look at it from a distance or to put a surround around it like a framework and that will really um, focus your attention on the picture and not all, all of the outside influences of everything else. Turn it upside down or sideways or Whatever way is easiest for you to stitch at the time. I've turned it upside down to make this a little bit easier for myself. So I suppose I've done quite a bit. I didn't want to bore you watching me do all of it, but I've couched on some nice threads. I've got some light coloured ones on this side that are a bit pearly so that they show the light and I've got some darker ones on the shaded side. I've added in a bit of blue there as you can see. I really liked how that fuzzy, you know, the one we unraveled, that thread that was a tubular ribbon. See how I've used it there with a bit of seed stitch and just a few French knots to make it look like. And I'm going to say it's your choice. It could be trees or it could be hills, whatever. Anyway, up here I am just about to finish off with a few finishing touches I think I overall I think if you looked at it you would sort of think yeah pretty good you know it does look like a tree it does look like a gum tree to me so I'm just finishing off and I am working on this area here at the moment see how I've done a few layers of different trees uh, sorry leaves remember how we did some underneath underneath that blue gauze sky they just look like shadow dapply ones. I've got some of those lovely ones that I've um, unraveled a little bit from the other tubular ribbon because they look like little skeleton leaves or shadows of leaves or something. I'm not very specific wanting it to be anything in particular. I just like the overall look of it. So to start with here, I've added a, you know, a layers of leaves here, which is a bit of a mess. I could have glued it, but... I'm just thinking I might just do a little bit of this seed stitch and that'll hold it enough. So it wouldn't need much. We'd just do it with a little bit of seed stitch, maybe some straight stitch down the centres or whatever we like. There's so much we could add and I could really, you know, spend all day playing with something like this. But to just get it to you to see some sort of something almost finished, I thought we'd just hurry through and do this. Don't worry about these things, I'll just pull them out. So although it looked quite complicated, it was really just layers of the same sort of leaf shape, some fatter, some thinner, some lighter, some darker, that kind of thing. And just with a few seed stitches to tack it down and then we can pretty anything up later. So 
so that's basically it as you can see it looks a whole lot better with a surround around it it really looks like a painting a textile painting look i hope you have really enjoyed watching this video and uh, if you have just press like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more all of uh, the links for finding me are below thanks for watching